Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Diana. I am one of the advisors here at UQ. Also joining us, we have Miss Tanya, who is another one of our advisors. So we'll quickly pop our cameras on just while everyone's getting ready and comfortable. Um, but once the presentation starts, I will turn it off because my background's doing all sorts of weird things and it's quite distracting. Uh, Tanya will be looking after the inbox or the chat. So if you have questions, you can pop them in there and she'll do her absolute best to answer them. Um, otherwise, I might just give it a couple of more minutes to see if anyone else will be joining us and then we'll get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, hello, everyone. Now, someone's raised their hand. Um, if you've got a question, you can pop it in the chat, in this chat box here. Now, I am confirming everyone's here for the culture shock and homesickness workshop. So this is mostly aimed at our international and interstate students who are starting probably this semester have already started and are feeling the effects of culture shock and homesickness. Welcome everyone. I can see the waiting room is still got people coming in. So I'll give it a couple more minutes. All right, I think we'll get started. I'm going to just turn off this video because my blurry background is very distracting. But yes, hello, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as mentioned, today is going to be all about culture shock and homesickness. Uh, now, I was having a bit of technology issue, mostly because you heard that very loud bang. Uh, <laughs> This is a different computer, but thank you so much for joining us. Today, we were, are going to cover everything to do with being in Brisbane, culture shock, what it might feel like, what homesickness is. Um, we'll cover the W curve. And by the end of it, you should feel nice and prepared for being here. Hopefully you walk away for some with some tips as to what to do. Like I always say with this kind of workshops, take what is good for you, take the golden nuggets, leave the rest. Uh, so we know really when you are moving countries, it's really exciting. You know, you've been planning. Most of you have been planning this for a while. You've been looking at, you know, Google <laughs> mostly trying to pick where you're going to go. You might have had UQ as your preference all along. You might have been looking at a couple of different universities, but it's pretty exciting. Um, however, there's a lot of changes that come. So sometimes it can be a bit of anxiety inducing. And that's really normal. That's part of the course of being at you know, being at the stage that you're at and making such huge changes. You'll find that as you arrive in Brisbane and you get settled and you're experiencing everything to do with it, um, you're going to be challenged. And, you know, you're going to be outside of your comfort zone, which is good because it means you're growing. Uh, so there'll be some positive things, there'll be some negative things. So it's really important that you actually look after your mental health. And, you know, everyone's a bit different. Some of you have already lived overseas. Some of you, this is the first time you've even lived out of home. Everyone's experience is on a, on a large range, on a large spectrum. But in general, these are some healthy and some simple ways that you can look after your mental health when you're abroad. Um, make sure that you have a safe person that you can talk to about your feelings, feelings and experiences. And what I mean by a safe person is this is someone who will be supportive of you, who will lift you up, um, try and avoid, you know, the people in your life who might be a little bit negative or may just say, oh, well, just quit. It's too hard. Talk to the people that understand where you're at, that uh, provide you that nice place to share where you're at. You can come to us as advisors. You can join some of the clubs and societies. Um, it's important to keep active. If you're just at home all the time, not doing much, um, a couple of things are going to happen. You're going to lose um, a little bit of physical fitness. Um, it's going to take a bit longer for you to get over jet lag. Um, and you're going to find that in general, you're not going to feel as good. Uh, Brisbane has amazing weather. We have 
beautiful sunshine. I think right now is such a good time of year. It's not too hot. Um, it is really a city that's made to be enjoyed outdoors. So making sure that you get out, that you keep active is going to ensure that your mental health remains healthy. Um, eating well, so have a nice balanced diet, eat your fruit and vegetables, try and, you know, reduce the amount of alcohol that you take. Just, you know, do the normal things that you'll be doing at home. Um, definitely you'll find that when you're eating healthy, you feel better. Um, while it's okay to have, you know, junk food here and there, prolonged engagement with junk food actually just makes you feel a little bit worse later on. It's important that you stay connected with friends and family back home, particularly during your transition period. You're going to be experiencing lots of exciting things that you're just going to be so excited to share, but also they are your safe people. So figure out, you know, how often you're going to Zoom with them or WhatsApp or WeChat and have a little bit of a regular routine with them. Um, it's fine to take a break if you need to. So if you have a day where you go, you know what, today I just don't feel like doing anything. You just want to stay home and watch some Netflix. That's okay as well. It's about taking all with balance, enjoying it, kind of being present. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If you're struggling a little bit or things aren't quite going how you'd hope they would, make sure you ask for help. You can come and chat to us at Student Services. You can chat to friends and family. You can chat to other people in your, uh, in your accommodation if you're in shared accommodation. All right. So the biggest part of our workshop today is going to be all about the cultural adjustment process. So this is a nice little graph that shows you this W that I mentioned before. So this is pretty much what we call the cultural adjustment process, the culture shock wave, the W of adjustment. This has many names, but it essentially covers five steps. Step one is the anticipation, you know, the excitement of it. You're anticipating coming to Australia. You're doing your research, you're packing. You're quite excited by it all. Then you move on to this beautiful honeymoon phase. It's everything's exciting. You're generally having fun. And then you come down to this, the first ooh of the W, which is the cultural shock phase, where things are a little bit harder. You might be a little bit disencouraged. You might be a little bit irritable. If things aren't quite going as you'd want them to. This usually happens after about, I reckon about week two or three of being here. That's when that might start setting in. Um, mostly that's because things are starting to feel real. You've done a little bit of the initial exploration that you wanted to. So this is where you might find yourself in a couple of weeks. But fear not, because you will eventually get to point four, which is that gradual recovery or adjustment phase where you're actually really enjoying it. And then you get into the adaptation and integration phase. The other side of this would be the re-entry to back home where you essentially go through reverse culture shock. I'm not going to focus too much on the re-entry because we've just gotten here. So... We've gone past that first anticipation stage. You've gotten here, you've gotten your letter of offer, you have mostly arrived or you're due to arrive, you're looking at accommodation, maybe you've seen a koala. You're kind of doing these things that you were looking for. So you're in this euphoria. Everything's really cool. Nothing's annoying you too much. There's inconveniences, but in general, you're feeling energetic, you're feeling engaged. And this is a really fun stage. It can last a few weeks or even a few months. Um, it depends on your experience, your personality, uh, the expectations that you had. Um, while you're in this nice stage of excitement, it's a really great time to start connecting with other people, to start making friends, to join clubs and societies. Um, keep a visual diary or a written diary or a journal or a blog or however you want to record it of things that you have really enjoyed and things that you want to do. So there's two things, things that you're enjoying, you know, like maybe you've found your little coffee place that makes your coffee just perfect, a breakfast place. And maybe you found a really good restaurant, you made a friend. Keep a record of that because that will help when you get to stage three, which is the cultural shock bit. And um, at this point, it's also a really good idea to start writing what we call a little bit of a bucket list. So things that you want to do, things that you want to see and things that you want to achieve while you're here in Brisbane. This bucket list is going to be instrumental for you when you are struggling a little bit, when you're having, you know, that downward spiral where you're going, oh, I'm not feeling as enthusiastic. I'm not feeling as good. 
that bucket list will be so helpful because you can pick something out of that bucket list. It'll temporarily move you out of that mental space that you're at and reconnect you to that initial euphoria or that initial excitement. So initial honeymoon period, it's been a couple of weeks, it's been a couple of months, and you are starting to notice that maybe you're not as excited anymore. Um, maybe you're starting to just get annoyed at everything, like little things that perhaps before wouldn't have bothered you, is starting to bother you. Um, you might start to feel a bit homesick, so you're missing your friends, you're missing your family, you're missing your pets, you're missing your food, so it's a big thing. You don't necessarily understand this weird weather where it's cold, then it's really hot, then it's cold again. One thing that really helps with this slump or that downward spiral is to try to not compare the Australian culture and the new culture with your home culture, because I guarantee you they're very different. So if you're constantly comparing which one feels better or is better, you're going to get stuck in this pool and like, you know, pulling situation where you won't be able to enjoy that while you're here. So keep connecting with those new friends that you made in the first stage. It'll be tempting to isolate yourself and just stay in your room, but that's not going to help. Some of the things that um, are really that are commonly experienced by travelers, expats or exchange students um, in this culture shock are these six things that are in that picture. So essentially cultural shock arises from moving from one familiar culture to an unfamiliar one. And even if you've done all your research and you've come to the Aussie culture workshop, this might still happen. Um, small things like the climate. So if you've come from the Northern Hemisphere where it's getting into summer right now and you come from winter to winter, uh, that might be a little bit of a shock to the system. Also, the, you know, the climate in Australia is different. Um, although we are in winter right now, it's a very mild winter. It might even be the equivalent of your summer. So those confusing things with the climate might be a little bit unsettling. Food is always a big one because depending on where you're from, you might have really great cuisines with lots of flavor, very rich. Um, and you might find that the flavors in Australia are a little bit different. They might not be um, as exciting, perhaps. You may not have access to the comfort food that you did back home. Portion sizes are different. Um, the cost of food is a little bit higher in Australia. Um, you might find the little things that you were used to having before, like the corn. I've heard that corn is quite different in Australia because, uh, you know, it's sweet here where some countries don't have sweet corn. So food is a little bit, it can be a little bit of a off-putting thing at the start um, because we derive so much comfort from the food that we eat. And, you know, food is usually shared with family and friends. So oftentimes we're looking at a different way of engaging with it. The language, the language is always a little bit of a shock. The Australian accent, the lingo, so, you know, the words that we use, um, the way we pronounce things, shorten things, the expressions, um, the way you want to express yourself. It can be a little bit unfamiliar, even if English is your first language or your native tongue, you might still be trying to keep up with, oh, what was that thing that they were referring to? And the way they greet me is a little bit different. Uh, so, so those little nuances can be a little bit stressful. Um, the way we dress can, can cause a bit of confusion. Australia is a very liberal country, pretty much dress the way you want. That's it. <laughs> um, but you know, some some city, some Brisbane is a city, uh, but it's a very relaxed city. It's almost like a like beach sort of culture. Um, the way people have been dressed in the city is very relaxed. Um, whereas in some cities, when you go into the city or you're, you know, attending classes or you're going to meetings, it's quite formal and you dress up. And you might find that that's a little bit different here. You might even find that the materials of the clothes here compared to back home are different. And that is also linked to the climate. The difference in values can be a little bit of a shock to the system. Um, we are a country that is pretty much all about equality. So we don't necessarily have too many nuances in terms of different types of, um, just forgotten the word, uh, 
we're all mostly middle class is what I'm trying to say. So those are the values of you know equality. We're all treated the same. Um, there isn't much difference between people in different jobs. So there isn't that some some countries have a lot of class systems. Um, we don't really have that in Australia. Australia really values having a fair go. So everyone gets a chance to do something. Um, they're mostly quite friendly. So you will find that the Australian um, people are friendly in general, but they try, they like to keep to themselves. So while they might, you might have a nice chat with your neighbor every day, you may not know them too well. It might take a while for you to be invited out or for you to invite them. And the etiquette and behavior will be different. For example, Australia, we don't tip. Um, all our servers get paid a good living wage. So there's no tipping culture. Uh, for some people, this feels very bizarre. They'll go to a restaurant and they'll go, oh, I feel very rude that I'm not tipping. Um, so all of these things can contribute to culture shock. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult as well when you're starting to figure it all out and you might meet someone who's not very nice to you and it sort of puts you in a negative headspace. But know that you will get to the point where you'll gradually adjust and you'll start to feel good with these different things that you find, like with the culture shock and things that just feel a little bit off, just take a note of it and ask yourself a question. Why is this bothering me? How is it different to what I'm used to? Now, here are some of the symptoms of culture shock. It can be changes to health or illness. So you might have stomach aches or digestive issues. Headaches are pretty common, so tension headaches. You might have sore muscles or your back might be sore from constantly being tense. Um, it also is quite normal to come to a new country and experience an initial period of feeling unwell. Um, that's due to the changes in the water, changes in the food, changes in the atmosphere, changes in the different plants. So sometimes people get hay fever here because of when the plants are pollinating. Um, changes in sleep also due to jet lag, but you might find that you're sleeping a lot or having trouble sleeping. Um, a big a big thing that you might notice um, is frustration. You might feel sad. You might be irritable. You might start second guessing your decisions. You might start having a bit of self-doubt. That's a big, big tick where you go, oh, maybe I'm experiencing a bit of culture shock. Um, if you're persistently feeling negative, and this is outside of your usual way of being, um, some people are just naturally negative by nature. But if this is a little bit more than usual, a little bit of... Um, extra, you might be experiencing a little bit of culture shock. And remember, your brain is just trying to adapt to all the different changes. It doesn't yet have a roadmap for this is how we interact. This is what we do. It's still trying to figure all that out. Homesickness is a big one. It's when you are really missing your family and friends back home. You even miss your bed, your pillow. But that can be a symptom of culture shock. Um, and then you, if it's really bad, you might find yourself withdrawing from friends. You might find yourself withdrawing from activities and just generally not wanting to engage. However, there is hope here. There's lots of ways that you can adapt and overcome. The first one is recognize that this is temporary. You're not always going to feel like this. You're not always going to be confused by which way the cars come and what's a pedestrian crossing and which one, why is one yellow and why is one white? Um, you'll get used to it. Get outside and explore. Treat it a bit like a holiday. Get your curious mind going. Okay, what, not, what new thing am I going to learn today? Say you get lost. I get lost all the time. I used to get really flustered by it. One day I just went, you know what? I'm just treating this as an activity. I'm treating this as an adventure. What am I going to learn? Um, and I found that not only did I get lost less, I didn't get as overwhelmed. Really, really good um, tip is join the UQU clubs and societies. They have a club and society for pretty much anything that you are interested in. Um, but joining the activities, joining the clubs at university is going to break down some of the barriers that you might be facing. It's going to help you connect and meet other students. And you will meet with other students on exchange, other international students or interstate students that have gone through this before and can actually help you overcome and give you some great tips. Take time to journal, so write in a diary, do a blog, um, maybe talk to friends and family about what you're feeling, um, but also focus on the things that you're learning. So you might learn like, hey, I've learned how to catch the ferry. That was pretty cool. I've learned to um, catch it near five o'clock so I can get the sunset on the way back home. Uh, this goes without too much explanation, but 
have a good healthy routine in terms of exercise, sleep, and healthy eating. Those three things by themselves will make a big difference. Engage with the language, watch television with the subtitles on, so Netflix with the subtitles on in English. It's going to be very tempting to put in your home language. Um, but for now, try and watch Australian shows, uh, things like Home and Away, just normal television so that you can get used to the Australian accent. Once you're used to it, it's not so hard to understand. It just takes a, a minute or two to figure out what they're trying to say when you're new to it. And this is where the good part of this cultural adjustment process happens. It's the realization that you are going well. Suddenly, you've developed a bit of a routine, you have your breakfast place, you know your barista, they know how to make your coffee, you have your gym, you have your clubs and societies, you kind of have your thing going, you know which bus to catch, and things just feel easy, you're not worrying anymore as much, um, and while you still experience challenges, you feel a lot more confident in your ability to overcome them, you're less irritated by things. Um, and you might have days where you still feel a little bit irritated here and there, but, you know, it might be something that you go, hey, I'm actually um, okay now. I feel like I can cope with this. Now, there is a question, and it's a great question. If I can recommend some Australian shows on Netflix, please. Um, yes, it depends on what you're into, because some of them may not quite be your style. Um, but there's a very cute one. I'm going to write the... I'm going to write the name. Um, it's called uh, Mustard Dogs. It's, and I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent, so <laughs> uh, bear with me. Um, it's only four episodes. It's set in like different parts of the Australian kind of outback. And it's all about teaching puppies how to become cattle dogs. It's, um, and I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not doing it justice, uh, but it gives you actually a really good understanding of Australian culture it's nice and gentle, it's quite, it's quite good. Um, but it depends on what you're into. There are reality shows, there's scripted shows. Um, there's some really great Australian movies on um, Netflix. Maybe you just start off with normal pay TV, um, normal free to air TV rather, um, and go from there. But if anyone in, wants to put in things in the chat, some, um, some tips in terms of, recommendations for shows that you want to share, please put it in the chat because everyone can then read it. All right, now I'm going to um, stop answering the chat and I will let Tanya do it because I will get so sidetracked. <laughs> so this is where we're at, gradual adjustment, things are going well, maybe you're the person that's able to answer questions and then you adapt. You actually feel at home. Your room feels like your room. You're comfortable. You, you know, you know where to find things. You know where to do things. You, you aren't struggling anymore. You're just like this is it. You're really comfortable. It's your, it's your home. You're so happy with it that nothing is stressing you out apart from the usual things. Those initial feelings of anxiety, those initial feelings of feeling sad and missing everyone back home have reduced. Um, and you are feeling really comfortable with everything. And then it's time to go back home. It's that re-entry shock or return. So this is the um, opposite. You go back home and you experience culture shock again. And it's essentially reverse culture shock. It's the shock of the familiarity. But be kind to yourself. Take it in your stride. Remember that you've had this massive growth and you're going back home to share that with other people. And it, and it can be a little bit challenging, particularly um, when you've become quite independent, you, you've you been able to do all these amazing things by yourself. It takes a little moment to adjust. So I just want you to take a moment to ask yourself these questions and this will help you um, as you adapt and as you're here. So if you've got a piece of paper or similar, Ask yourself, what are some major cultural differences between my home country and Australia? Um, and if you're brave, you can certainly put some of your answers in the chat as well. Have a think about some major cultural differences. Could be things like religion, could be things like the way you talk to different people. So I call my boss by her name, um, which feels a bit unusual to me because I grew up um, in a country where I wouldn't call them by their first name I would be calling them by their title and their um, last name that's not quite how we do it here 
So that's a little bit of difference. Have a think about that. You might also want to ask yourself, what are some ways I can build my cultural awareness? So how can you get that curious lens happening to go, how can I understand the Australian culture a little bit better? And how can I engage with it in a way that I'm not going to get frustrated? Have a think about your expectations of Australia. How many expectations do you have? Are they realistic? Are they extreme? Uh, do you have no expectations? You know, are they very, very high? Are they very, very low? Realistic expectations are obviously the best way to go. But what are some of your expectations of Australia? Have a think about what are some of the personal warning signs that you need to be aware of that you're becoming overly stressed, that you might be depressed or feeling anxiety. You know, what are some warning bells for you that indicate that maybe you need to go and get some support? Have a think about who you can reach out to talk to if you're feeling culture shock or homesickness. Is it that you want to come and talk to us as advisors? Do you have a family or family member or friend who has lived, um, you know, has been an expat or has gone on exchange or has studied abroad? They can be a really good source of support. And lastly, take a minute or so to think about what healthy habits you can develop and continue in Australia. Because now is a really good time to have a couple of healthy habits there. So that you want to join the rowing club or you want to engage in beach volleyball. Uh, do you want to read more? Do you want to learn how to take you know, uh, panoramic photographs? I don't know, I'm making things up now. But I want you to take a minute to write down some of those healthy habits and I will stop talking for a minute so you can think. Oh, and someone's mentioned um, a major difference between um, their home country and Australia. It's the left-hand traffic. So, you know, even the way you cross the street, look left, look right, look left again, just in case you miss the truck. But all right, I'll be quiet for a little bit so you can think about what healthy habits you can develop and continue in Australia. I'll give you about a minute and then I'll continue with the rest of the workshop. Give you a tiny bit more and we will keep going. Someone's mentioned that their big difference was the time zone. So their home country is eight hours behind Australia. Just trying to figure out a time difference when to chat with people. You're sending them a Hello, good morning message there in the afternoon. Time zones are a big thing. I remember someone once mentioned that um, how loudly people spoke was something that was different. They were used to um, speaking quite loudly and they found that in Australia people spoke quite quietly. So that was interesting. But all right, let's keep going. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different cultural hubs in Brisbane. We are 
Um, Australia, by, by its very nature, is very multicultural. More than 40% of our, I think it's actually more than 35% of our population was born overseas. So we got a little bit of everything here. Um, in this screen, there's a lot of writing, I know it's a little bit overwhelming, um, but we've got a couple of different suburbs with where the cultural hubs are. These are the places where you can get some really nice authentic food, where you might find um, specialty shops as well, and where you can reconnect with a particular culture. So if we're looking near the south side, so Sunnybank, Sunnybank Hills, Robertson, McGregor, Highlandville, Runcorn, there's a little bit of a little bit of Asia in general. So um, there's a big cultural hub there of all the different Asian countries um, for some reason have kind of come together there. So there's shops, there's restaurants, um, there's clubs. I think there's also like several karaoke. Um, I don't want to say they're not quite bars. They're kind of like between a cafe and a restaurant, um, but there's a lot happening there. Um, Morocco is quite known for having a lot of um, African influence, particularly Ethiopia and Southern Sudan. Uh, if you're looking for Vietnamese influence and Vietnamese food, you're looking at Inala um, and Jurek. Um, also, Richlands has Vietnam, Philippines. Uh, I don't want to go through the whole list because it's quite a lot, but if you can, you know, take a screenshot of it, you will be able to find um, whatever you're into. There is something there for you. Um, and you'll see that it depends on which part of Brisbane you're living near. So the Brisbane is divided by the river. So we go north, south, east, west from the river. So we have like north side has particular um, particular cultural hubs. And we have the south side that has other hubs. So depending on which side of the river you land in, you'll be able to connect with your personal cultural hub. To make it a little bit easier though, because there's a lot happening there, there is a multicultural center, so called the Welcome Hubs. So we actually collaborate with 17 welcome hubs in local communities across Brisbane. So these are like local community organizations that really want to be welcoming to their newest neighbors. They find ways to connect people together, be a culture, um, different parts of economic life in Queensland. It's a really, they're really great environments to meet other people. As you can see from the photo, they are across all ages, um, particularly if you have come over with family, these are really great ways to connect. Um, you'll meet with other people who have kids. Um, but these hubs are great at making new friends, getting you used to being in Brisbane, giving you tips um, in terms of traveling around Brisbane, things to do, things to avoid, engaging you with training and employment. Um, they can help you understand a little bit more about the local community. And it's really good for networking as well. Um, that website, multiculturalaustralia.org.au slash welcome hubs, has a lot of information. You can also just go Multicultural Australia Welcome Hubs uh, and they will direct you. This gives you a list of all the different locations. So um, just quickly looking at it, there's north side, south side, and doesn't seem to be too many on the west, but there's a little bit of everything. Um, don't get too stressed by these Welcome Hub locations. Just go into that website that I mentioned before, Google the Welcome Hubs, the Multicultural Welcome Hubs, and it will direct you to where you want to go. Um, some of you may be looking quickly at these um, locations and may go, oh, that's the one that's closest to me. All right. So Multicultural support services. Um, in August, they usually have Multicultural Month. I haven't heard too much about this year, but that's what it was last year. Um, so there is lots of great activities happening. Um, the Queensland Multicultural Center is um, located in Kangaroo Point and Newmarket. Um, Pacifica Women's Alliance is in Runcorn. So these are multicultural support services. Some of them have support that is specific for settling in. Some of them may give you accommodation support. Some of them may you know, help you with understanding how things work. It really depends on the particular hub that you go to and what they're offering. Um, but at the bottom one, it says UQ Union Clubs and Societies. I did not mention this before. I said, I mean, you may not remember because I mentioned a lot of things, but there is a club for anything that you're interested in. We have, I think it's over 220 clubs now, ranging from postgrad to undergrad, um, specific in uh, what you're studying, just entertainment, 
particular things. So there's um, there's clubs on photography, there's clubs for dancing, there's clubs for archery, um, there's clubs for psychology, there's um, clubs if you like poetry, there's board games, there's clubs if you just like to go out drinking responsibly, there is a club for you. They are absolutely the best way to make friends, the easiest way. People go there with the purpose of making friends. The good thing about these clubs is they have a president, they have a vice president, they have usually an events coordinator. And these people, what they do is they will welcome you into the club and they will introduce you. So even if you're a little bit shy, even if you're a bit introverted, you don't have to do all the hard work yourself. They will actually help you to meet other people. Um, this is how I made a lot of friends when I was at uni um, back in the decade. <laughs> um, I, I engaged with the clubs and societies and it was really fun. Um, they have free stuff, paid stuff. To join the clubs is usually a very low cost um, because it's all very student friendly. Um, to find out what the clubs are, go to the UQU webpage and they will have the clubs and societies there. There is something for everyone. Um, right now, because we've just come to the end of exams, most of the clubs are taking a little bit of a break, but they will start up again once the semester starts. So if you don't take away anything except one thing, it is to join a club in society. And of course, I mentioned food. Everyone loves a little bit of food. So here are some of the tips where you can buy not just uh, cheaper food, but specialty food, as we would like to call it. You might go to Coles and go down the you know, Mexican aisle, and you might be looking at it and going, it's not quite Mexican. Um, it's Australian Mexican. Uh, but these markets, these grocery stores are a little bit more uh, specific. They're a little bit more uh, targeted. So we have things like Asian supermarkets in the city, um, Indian groceries, Bangladeshi and Indian. Um, in Castledine, there's a lot of fresh meat and groceries. Um, if you are looking for halal or kosher products, make sure that you find a butcher or a shop that specializes in that. Um, Coco's Annalie is a little bit of a one-stop shop for everything. So they have a little bit of everything. Um, they don't specialize just in one cuisine. They have a lot of things. So if you're not sure where to go, <laughs> I would go to Coco's and Annalie. Their prices are quite friendly and you'll be able to find just sometimes those little nuggets of, oh, this drink that I like from home, this lolly that I like from home. Whatever you're into, you'll be able to find. Um, but be warned, um, some of these specialty shops, if you're looking for something specific, might be a little bit more expensive than you're used to. And this is just because of importing things. <laughs> if you are finding that you're starting to struggle a little bit and you are not doing too well, you're starting to find that your welfare is not going well, your mental health is deteriorating, you can book in with our UQ counselors. So they're available for in-person and Zoom appointments. Uh, the easiest way to book in is to go to the website. They'll ask you to fill in a form. Once you fill in a form, you can book the next appointment. If you're not quite sure if you need counseling, if you're not quite sure what you need, you're just feeling a bit off, then come and book in with one of us. So like myself or Tanya as a student advisor, and um, we're a really good protocol um, when you're just feeling a bit lost and a bit unsure. Now, if there are any questions, that is a really great time to put them. You can do them via the Q&A or in the chat. Um, otherwise, if you wouldn't mind, could you please complete this very short questionnaire? Um, it just helps us to make sure that we are on the right track. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been great chatting with you. Um, I know it was a bit one-sided, but welcome to Brisbane. Welcome to UQ. We are just so happy that you are here. Thank you very much. Um, the question was, food levels, do we use kilojoules or calories? Normally, it is uh, kilojoules, but some might have both. Um, if they are imported, it might be in, in calories, depending where they come from. Uh, yes, most postgraduate students belong to clubs and activities. Um, they try and 
get the clubs and societies that are aimed at postgrads, uh, just because sometimes the um, the younger students will be part of the general ones. But there are clubs and societies for every stage of your career. Um, I didn't actually mention the specific halal meat store because there's many. <laughs> uh, Google is your friend here. It depends on the suburb that you're living in. Um, you will have a local halal store. Um, there's just quite a lot of them. I wouldn't be able to tell you all of them. If there are any other questions, any other comments? Well, uh, oh, if you're having trouble with the survey site, that's okay. It's um technology. We try our best, but sometimes it just doesn't quite do what we want it to do. Well, I think that's all the questions that we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week and please get in touch with us if you need anything else. Great job, Dee. Thanks. Oh, there's a couple more questions. Um, yeah. I can answer them. <laughs> Thanks, Tanya. <laughs> So the winter like weather like in winter, um, it's a little bit cold in the morning. So we're looking at single digits. And then during the bulk of the day, we are looking at uh, like in your 20s, mid 20s. So it's quite nice. Um, and then back to it being a little bit colder at night. So I recommend bring a, bring a sweater with you because you'll need it during the day. But as the day goes on and the sun's up, it gets a bit hot. And then it's relaxed. But um, in Brisbane, we don't get snow. We don't get, there's not a lot of raining during the winter. So it's quite nice. Um, normal social media used in Australia, it depends on your age. <laughs> um, the, I would say the older generation still uses Facebook. The middle generation uses a combination of things like Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat. And the younger generation, I know they use TikTok for sure. And there's probably other things that they use that I am uh, not so aware of, uh, but most people will still have some sort of um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok happening there. Um, all right, great. I will, I was about to close it, but I'm going to give it a second to see if there's any other questions. That is last questions in. The last questions. They're like, oh, she's going to stop. <laughs> As well as you can't, you guys can't even see me now. This um background is. I know it's the there. We go. There this we go. I, this is what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, there will be lots of events of secondhand markets in Brisbane. They're called um suitcase rummages. I will. Um, oh, I was going to type in how you uh, actually write it. Um. Here we go. Lots of suitcase rummaging happening. We also have a lot of uh, um, pre-loved stores, secondhand stores, um, Facebook Marketplace is quite active, but all through Brisbane, there's lots of markets happening. There's um, weekend markets, once a month markets, um, really fancy expensive markets, a little bit more um, low key markets. Uh, there is a website, but the easiest thing is just 
look for secondhand markets um, in Brisbane and it will tell you where the different markets are located. Yeah. All right, a couple more minutes for questions. <laughs> And some of you may just be hanging out with doing the survey. Mm. All right, I think this is it. <laughs> no more questions on your Antonia? Nothing from our side, thank you. You covered everything. All right, well, thank you everyone thank and you. Um, enjoy your couple of weeks before the semester starts. See you, everyone. Yeah, everybody. Bye.